Now, let me talk about Raw, because this show was the best Raw in forever. Now, granted, you know, the opening segment, the opening segment was very by the numbers, where Orton's out there celebrating, and the baby face are out there, then a whole bunch of heels come out, and they, they announce a multi-person tag at the end of the show. It's It was nothing special. It's nothing you need to go out of your way to see. But it was worth it to see how happy Randy Orton was. When you think about this guy's career, and boy, did he have some some ups and downs, and a lot of downs. And uh, he came out there, and I'm pretty sure with all sincerity told us this was the greatest run of his entire career, and he was so happy, and he loved Riddle, and they hugged, and the people were just so full of joy. If they break these guys up anytime soon, I'm going to be so mad. But they haven't yet, everybody, so I'm not taking that away from the show. It was a great moment. We had Bianca Belair and Sonya Deville, and they went 45 seconds to a countout. Then, of course, Sonya Deville is management, so she restarted the match with no countouts. Then they went 52 seconds to a DQ when she hit Bianca with the chair. Then she's management, so she announced it is no DQ. And so since it's no DQ, I mean... The heels just started running in, and, and they were triple-teaming Bianca Belair. Now, why Bianca has no friends in her hometown, that's, uh, that's another matter entirely. But she overcame the odds in her hometown. She beat up three wrestlers. She sent the two outsiders packing. She hit her finishing move on Sony Deville. She pinned her, retained the title, and everybody in her hometown was so happy. It worked, and I liked it. We had an Edge and Damian Priest segment, and as I've said before, I have no idea what Edge is talking about, and I don't like these promos, and he's a thousand times better as a babyface. But I don't know what it was, but he had a delivery on this one where I actually briefly became compelled. I thought he did a good job. I still don't know what he's talking about, but this was, of all of the Edge promos he has done backstage with Damian Priest, this was the best. But I still don't know what's going on. Veer Mahan beat Sm- Sam of the Smothers Brothers. He was killed in 36 seconds. Just a squash to get the guy over. They did the arm wrestling match, and uh, as noted, they went back and forth. They 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 did a, a fake real arm wrestling match, and in the end, Bobby Lashley won. He put the guy's hand down, and he won. And then, of course, he's celebrating. He gets jumped by Omos. They beat him up. They... They drop the table on him. They're having a match at the pay-per-view. It ain't going to be good, but uh, this was not your your totally typical arm wrestling trope. It was, uh, at least we got a winner before they, they turned the table over on the guy. We had a mixed tag match with Truth as referee. It's his way to try to get all these couples, you know, they're, they're, they're unhappily married. They got married a week ago. So they do the match here, and uh, Akira Tozawa pins Reggie. And, bro, he did the biggest senton. It was like if if uh, Montez Ford decided he was going to do a senton, Tozawa jumped so high and uh, pinned Reggie in a minute 31. And then Truth tells Dana, you know, the match is over. You know, get out of this ring before someone takes your title. He then rolls her up, and because he's the referee, he tries to count his own pin like it's the YWF. <laughs> but she kicks out, goes running, and uh, this must continue. We had a Becky Lynch promo. Like, her and Seth are two smart people, but, like, I don't know what they're thinking with these gimmicks. She's got this outfit on. She's all depressed. Her life means nothing without this belt. Her gimmick is she's a new mother, but her life means nothing without this belt. (laughs) Like, dude, I'm a dad. I don't buy this for a second. So she's all sad. And then whose music should hit? Oh, her her whole storyline. Get this. I've hit rock bottom. Now I can fight my way back to the top. I'm like, you know what a storyline is that'll really hook those viewers? Is the hated heel fighting their way back from below. So anyway, Asuka's music hits. She makes her big return. She dances down to the ring. Place is going nuts. She cuts a promo. I will stop you. Nobody is ready for Asuka. Fans love it. She flicks Becky in the nose. Becky takes a swing. Asuka avoids it. She takes a swing. Becky bails. Thought it was a good segment. Mostly because Oscar returned. But I thought it was all right. Then we had Damian Priest beating Finn Balor. Match was good. But then the finish, of course, it is raw. So they're having this good match. And then uh, Edge is all the way up on the on the ramp. 
He's he's hundred yards away, sitting in this goofy throne. He stands up. Finn Balor is distracted by height, and he is hit with a choke slam, and this new flatliner gimmick, and he is pinned. I don't know if uh, future is bright for old Finn Balor here. Unless you go on the YouTube chat, then they're sure he's staying. He would never leave. Miz TV with Theory. It's Miz and Theory. The first five minutes of this was the biggest load of trash on this show by a significant margin. God help me. Austin Theory and Miz going over Miz's resume. Bro, if I never hear Miz's resume again, it'll be too soon. I am so sick. Of hearing this guy, I got it, okay? It's it's big time, go away, turn the channel heat at this point. So finally, who should return but Ali? Ali is back. They make fun of him for, you know, wanting to take his ball and go home. And he wants a shot at, at, uh, at Theory. But, you know, Miz says, blah, blah, blah. So Theory challenges Miz. Miz says, dude, I can't just make matches. So Theory goes, I just texted Vince. He said the match is on. Miz is furious. But in fact, they have the match. It's Mustafa Ali versus Miz. And uh, I'm a big critic of Miz, especially in the ring. And granted, this was, uh, you know, he was in there with Mustafa Ali. But this was the best Miz match. I can't even remember the last singles match Miz had that was this good. He was working. They went up and down. They had psychology. The I mean, this was a this was a legitimate, very good Miz match. And it wasn't all the other guy. It may have been largely the other guy. But Miz, this is one of those matches where Miz totally held up his end of the show. And he did a good job. And he got pinned clean in the middle of a figure four reversal. And uh, all he won. All he returned and won. And then he got laid out by Ciampa whose real first name is, in fact, Tommaso, so he is no longer Tommaso Ciampa. He is now just Ciampa. Rhea Ripley promo. She actually asked a good question. Are you ready to tell us why you did this? And Rhea had a good answer. Dude, I showed up here as a single star. I won the women's title. Then I get in, I end up in the tag division. And, dude, I'm just getting beaten right and left, and my partners don't hold up there to the bargain, so I couldn't take it anymore. Liv shows up, attacks her. They had a brawl. There's a segment I cannot do justice to, but if you have this on your DVR, watch the segment with Chad Gable, Kevin Owens, Seth Rollins, and the Usos, as they all argue back and forth setting up the main event tonight. They were all great in this segment, and I greatly enjoyed it. And then we had the main event, which was Cody Rhodes, Ezekiel, Randy Orton, and Riddle against Rollins, Owens, and the Usos. This was the closer you're going to get in WWE to uh, how AEW has their, their party match every night. So the party match, everybody got in there. They got to do their spots. They got to shine. All the big spots at the end. Baby faces, they take out all of those uh, all of those heels one by one by one. Ends up with uh, an Uso in the ring. He gets the uh, RKO off the middle rope. Pinned in the middle of the ring. Randy Orton celebrates on his 20th anniversary show. I like this Raw a lot. Am I the only one? I realize that the show normally sucks. I realize that when you compare this to like an actual great wrestling show, it wasn't like that good. But man, I thought this was a good show. I enjoyed the three hours. And I liked it. And I won't hear otherwise. <laughs> Are there a bunch of people flooding your timeline and your mentions and your emails? I don't saying care. That that I don't read that crap. Show? It was good. What did you think about Becky's uh, makeup and? Uh, Dude, I don't know what's going on with the haircut. Two. I thought that looked good. I, now the the whole outfit. You, she's been with her man too much. They they. I don't know what. Well, they're here's the on thing, Warburg, bro. I don't know if you know fantastic. this or not. I'm gonna give you. A, I'm gonna give you. A, I'm gonna give you a secret. Okay. Becky Lynch is objectively a beautiful woman. And so yeah. you actually can do anything with her hair, and she's going to look good. Mm -hmm. That's well, why. That's why nice when you accessory. look at a catalog, you know they got all these clothes, or you know you go and you flip through that thing at the barber. Oh, what haircut's going to look good? Well, that haircut may not look good on you. They found a, a good-looking person to put that haircut on. When are you Same with find clothes. One? I'll talk more about beauty after the break. Observer Live. Of course, I'm not actually going to talk about beauty on this show.
I cannot, I cannot believe how attacked people are at the idea that Raw was a good show or that I liked it. They're attacked? What do you think, really? what do you think I do in my life? I'm just miserable all day? I'm a happy guy. Literally, my only pain is doing my job, which happens to be most of my life. And yeah, not all good the life. time. I, I had a great time today. I watched, I watched those Impact matches, you know, coming off a good Raw last night and, you know... I'm happy. Uh, <laughs> I, I don't think you are. What I think a you're horrible a, thing. I think you're putting out a front. People are so appalled. <laughs> I didn't talk about nothing but lousy segments. They were they were good segments, one after the other. Some good stuff on there. And I guess, you know, maybe you're writing yourself for all the influx of people who want to discuss Becky Lynch talking about the AEW women's division. Do I have to talk about legitimate, like, no problem segments on this show for people to actually believe me? Sure. Well, I mean, the opening segment, there was nothing wrong with it. It was very by the numbers, but I liked it. Liked Randy. You know, I liked Bianca winning and overcoming all the odds in her hometown. That was good. I, I, I even liked Edge. Did you like Sonya slapping the hell out of Carmella and uh, oh, we Zelina? can. I'll get into that in a second. Don't <laughs> let me forget. I mean, the you know, Tamina and Akira Tozawa versus Dana and Reggie. That was harmless, and it had a great finish. That senton was awesome. Oscar's return was great, and yeah. I swear to God, that Miz match. I was so impressed with Miz in that match, and obviously Ali was great. But you know, I've seen a million matches. Everyone Miz is in the ring with is better than him. So. I've seen a million matches where, like, it was good, but it was all the other person. This was not all the other person. Miz was really good in this match. What'd you think about Ali? Wait, you think I'm going to lie about the Miz of all people? <laughs> What'd you think about Ali getting the win and then getting laid out? Do you think they're going to do something like go Well, you know, I'll tell you why it was weird. I'll tell you why it was weird. Because the way they did the segment, I thought that Ali was going to be next in line for Theory. And then he had to go like go through Miz first. So he goes through the Miz, and then like it would be fine if Theory laid him out or whatever. But Champa laid him out. So what? What? Well, do you, what does Theory what have wondering. to do with any of this? Well, do you think it's going to end up in a three way? And it I haven't could. seen any of the things that they've done. I know they do. They film things for WWE.com and all that afterwards. So maybe somebody talked to Champa and he made things more clear. But it's like I could see them actually going with a three way there. You know, and having singles matches because... Well, here's the no, problem, Mike. You're I right, loved, You're yeah. right, but here's the problem. The pay-per-view, the go-home show is next week. So yeah, but it would be mean... one thing if we had like four weeks for the pay-per-view and you could do a bunch of stuff to build a three-way. Like, why not do a Theory against Ali and then, you know, whoever wins or uh, Ciampa can run in during the pay-per-view match and then you do the thing to set up a three-way later. Why would you start with the three-way? Well, that's why I'm wondering if because Ciampa can say I'm here and it's great that you're back, but I want to beat up that kid who I should should have beaten up more in NXT and they do it that way. And I and I know what you're saying and you're exactly right, but I don't think that that affects their their there's no time constraints on them. They can have a match with two people for that title. But this story really just kicking off now. I mean, backlash is just a stop on in that story if you wanted to go in that direction, which. Again, I don't know what they're going to do here, but I know there's a lot of people that are happy Ali's back. I'm happy Ali's back. I love watching him, but, you know, I'm sitting here with tempered expectations right now. He's lighter, and he worked the whole match. Yes. <sighs> Bugfly in your mouth? I missed that. Jared, can we get a replay? Was that on film? I swallowed a bug. I hope it was uh, a big one. Ah! Uh, mm. My wife is asking what happened. And, and you explain. Bug. She's cackling. She's God. never. I've never seen her so happy. <laughs> What's just, God trying to tell me when I was in the middle of that speech and a bug flew in my mouth? Talk less. I guess. <laughs> I don't. Yeah. There's not a meaning in everything, dude. Sometimes bad things just happen for no reason. A bug flew in your mouth. You think you think, you, you think it was bad? How do you think the bug feels? If I'm walking down the road and I see a giant mouth, I'm not going in it. <laughs> right. If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, The Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.